Welcome to this video in which we will do musculoskeletal examination. We'll start with hands examination, then we'll do knees examination. Hi, my name is Mansoor. Can I know your name, please? Shafiq. Shafiq. Can I examine your hands and your knees? Yes. Thank you. Can you expose your hands till the elbows? Okay, thank you. Can you put it on the table? I will uh, ensure the privacy. I have to have good lightning and I will wash my hand. Then I will start by looking to the dorsum of both hands. There is no swelling, no scars, no ulcers, no rashes, no deformities, and no wasting of the muscles. I will look to the nails. There is no pitting and no onycholysis. Then I will look to the palms of both hands. No wasting of the muscles, no thinner or hypothenar wasting, no rashes, no ulcers, and no deformities. Then I will look to the forearms, looking for any nodules or rashes. There is no rashes and no nodules. Can you put it again? Then I will uh, do the uh, feeling for the joints. Three questions I need to answer by feeling the joint. First, is there a hotness or no? Then, is there a tenderness or no? And then, is there an effusion or no? Now, I will start proximally. I will go distally. I will assess the temperature of the right wrist. I'm comparing it with the forearm. There is no hotness. And then over the MCPs, I'm comparing it with the forearm, assuming that the forearm temperature is normal. There is no hotness. And again, on the left side, no hotness. Then I will look for the tenderness and the fusion. I will start with the right wrist. I'm putting my thumbs up and my index fingers down. I'm now assessing for tenderness. I'm looking to the patient face. There is no tenderness. And there is no effusion because I can feel the proximal and distal ends of the joints. If you cannot feel the ends of the joints, probably the patient is having effusion, synovial thickening, or fat. If it is effusion, if you will press with one thumb, your other thumb will be elevated. Here I can feel the joints line uh, freely. The MCPs, the same. You will put the thumbs up and the index fingers down. I'm looking now for tenderness and effusion. No tenderness. And no effusion because I can feel the joints line. Then I will do what we call squeeze test or stress test. It is not very specific. You don't know which joint is sore better always to examine each joint individually. Then I will do the proximal interphalangeal joints and distal interphalangeal joints feeling. I will put my right hand from the sides and my left hand from up and down. I will press with my left hand. I'm looking now for tenderness. There is no tenderness and there is no effusion because if there is effusion, if I will press with my left hand, the fluid will come to my right hand. No tenderness and no effusion. No tenderness and no effusion over the PIPs and DIPs. And then I will do the IP joint of the right thumb. The same now I will do for the left hand. I will start with the rest. I'm looking to the patient face. I'm feeling the proximal and distal end of the left wrist. Then the MCPs from the first to fifth or from fifth to first. No tenderness and no effusion. I will do again stress test or squeeze test. And now looking for the first MCP of the right of the left hand. Then the PIPs and DIPs. Again, I will put my right hands from the from the sides and left hand from up and down. I'm pressing with my left hand. There is no tenderness and no effusion. No tenderness and no effusion over the PIPs and the IPs. And then I will do the IP joint of the left hand. Then I will proceed to movement. Now I will try to uh, move the wrist joint. 
I will ask the patient to do the active movement to see what the patient can do by himself, then I will do it passively. And the rationale behind doing passive movement is to differentiate between intra and extra articular pathologies. Usually in extra articular pathologies, the active movement will be affected, but the passive movement will be good. But for intra-articular uh, pathologies, both will be affected, the passive and active movements. Can you do like this, please? So you can see here now, the left wrist movement is not full. He has some limitation of the left wrist movement while the right wrist is uh, extending normally. Can you do the opposite, please? Now I'm doing the flexion of the wrist joints. Again, the right wrist is uh, flexing normally, but the left wrist, there is limita limitation of the uh, uh, flexion, and this indicates some problem in the joint. And I can take the chance here to do what we call Fallon test. And Fallon test, it is for the carpal tunnel syndrome, which is the entrapment of the uh, median nerve, in which the patient will have numbness and tingling sensation in the lateral three and a half fingers or the radial side three and a half fingers. And I should wait for 30 to 60 seconds to induce the entrapment and to have the symptoms. Do you have any tingling sensation or you have any numbness? No, okay, that's it. Then I will ask the patient to do the active movement of the MCPs, PIBs, and DIBs. Can you do like this? So the patient can do full flexion of the metacarbophalangeal joints, proximal interphalangeal joints, and distal interphalangeal joints. Extension, abduction, and adduction. Now I will ask him to move the thumb. Flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction, then circumduction. Okay, now we will proceed to do the passive movement. We will do the passive movement of the wrist, normal passive movement of the right wrist, and the passive movement of the right MCPs, normal passive movement of the right MCPs. At the same time, I can feel for flexor tendon crepitus when I'm doing the passive movement of the right MCPs. And I can do also assist for the, for subluxation of the MCPs while I'm doing the passive movement. Now we will do the passive movement of the left hand. He has limited passive movement of the left wrist. This indicates that the pathology or the problem is in the joint because both were affected, the active and passive movement. MCPs, normal passive movement of the left MCPs, and I'm feeling now for crepitus, and I will look also for subluxation in the MCPs, which is not there here. Then, after the uh, movement, I will do a special test. We did already the Fallon test for the carpal tunnel syndrome. We have another test for the carpal tunnel syndrome, which is the tunnel test, where you will tap at the entrance of the, uh, where, where the, where the median nerve is emerging over the flexor retinaculum to induce the entrapment of the median nerve. Do you have any numbness there? Any numbness? Okay, then I will examine the other hand. I'm tapping over the flexor retinaculum. This is what we call tenel test. Then I will do Finkelstein test. It is for the Kervin tenosynovitis. I will put the thumb of the patient at the middle of the palm. Then I will do passive ulnar deviation to stress the tendons. Do you have any pain? No. Okay. So this is Finkelstein test for the Kervin tenosynovitis, which is negative here. Okay. Then I will assist the hand uh, function. I will ask the patient to do some task. I will ask him to pick up the pen. Okay, good. Just pick it up, please. Good. Then I will give him the key to switch on and switch off. Can you just switch on and switch off, please? Okay, thank you. Can you open your clothes, please? One only. Okay, that's it. That's it. Can you do hand grip? Just hand grip? Yes. Okay, good. 
And at the end of any joint exam, you have to examine one joint above and one joint below. For the hands, we'll examine one joint above, which is the elbow, to uh, assist for radiating pain or referred pain. And then you should do the neurovascular examination, which is essential part in musculoskeletal examination.